between myself and uh, Dr. Partington. Um, welcome all, and uh, I'll just like to start with a word of prayer, then we can uh, start from there. Uh, let us pray. Our kind and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity at this point in time that we can meet on this Sunday afternoon, Heavenly Father, to learn more about uh, the right arm of the three angels message, which is the health message, Heavenly Father. And we pray that as the doctor is going to share more about his knowledge in this field, that we may be edified and uh, share with those who didn't have the opportunity to be with this meeting. And we pray for those who are still coming to join us, that uh, all technical glitches may be uh, put away, Heavenly Father, by your holy angels, and that we may have a fruitful discussion and to learn more, not only about health, but about Christ. All this we pray in Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, welcome again, everyone. Uh, I would like to introduce our guest speaker uh, this evening. Uh, his name is Dr. Nicholas Partington. Uh, he is a qualified biochemist, a doctor of homeopathy, who is registered with the Allied Health Professional Council of South Africa. Uh, Dr. Partington has lectured to a lot of students uh, in anatomy, physiology, microbiology at the College of Homeopathy. And uh, in 2001, he was uh, chosen by Nestle, which is the largest food company in the world, where he was uh, holding a position of medical and scientific director of the whole company from 2001 up to 2007. Uh, so this is the position that he held until his retirement in uh, 2007. Um, Dr. Partington has attended many international uh, speaking events where there would be uh, medical people uh, in the science. He has worked with uh, a lot of African countries um, establishing feeding schemes and getting involved in the uh, trials for HIV and AIDS clinical tests around the country. And uh, in the last eight years, he has trained a lot of gospel medical missionary workers in the Southern Saharan Africa. Um, Dr. Partington is a keen Bible student. We should emphasize that and a student of the spirit of prophecy where he emphasizes on strengthening the right arm of the third angel's message using uh, what he's going to be sharing with us. Um, with that said, I'm going to give over to you, doctor. Over to you, doctor. Hello, doctor. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, doctor. You are muted. Can, for I, con can, I, can I continue? Yes, you can. Yeah. Your life, your health, your choice, and uh, the information we're sharing tonight is actually information for you to consider. Uh, we're not imposing anything, but we're sharing with you information which we believe will help us to make the right decisions. Now, 
Projected for 2020, about 63 million people will die worldwide. 70% of those will suffer from autoimmune diseases, etc. And that basically means that 44 million will die because of what they're eating and drinking. So this slide shows us the a sample of the 100 types of autoimmune diseases. And uh, it's me killing myself by what I'm eating, drinking, and thinking. Now, here's a list of some of these diseases, like emphysema, asthma, chronic bronchitis, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what is interesting is that these chronic disease lifestyle, there are more than 100 of these and uh, different types of autoimmune diseases. I bring it upon myself by my lifestyle. So uh, what was interesting is that a survey was conducted uh, in 2019, results were released, and South Africa ranked the unhealthiest country on earth out of 149 countries. And these were some of the parameters they used, a healthy life expectancy, blood pressure, diabetes, risk, obesity, depression, happiness, the use of alcohol and the use of tobacco, et cetera, et cetera. And one instance also looking at the government's amount of monies that have been spent on healthcare. Now, looking at the risks of coronavirus, who is mostly at risk? Now, we give you some examples here. <clears throat> the aged, those over 65, 70 are more vulnerable, depending on their level of, and the strength of their immune system. So the aged are vulnerable. And here are some of the diseases of those aged, those that have now reached 65, 70, 75. Obesity and heart disease and diabetes, type two, anemia, cancer and blood, high blood pressure, osteoporosis, et cetera. These are diseases which the doctors tell us is significant of those that are old age. Well, I don't really believe that. You don't have to go in and succumb to these diseases because you're now 65 and 70 and 75. That's not true. So COVID-19 poses more risks to patients with chronic diseases of lifestyle. And one particular one, of course, is diabetes type 2. Diabetes type 2, those who have succumbed to diabetes type 2 are more vulnerable, like actually mostly vulnerable to succumbing to COVID-19 infection. Now, there are lung diseases and uh, obesity, et cetera, et cetera, cancers, and so on and so on. Now, diabetes is the leading risk factor for COVID-19 deaths. And this was released by the Western Cape Provincial Department of Health. Now, we also know worldwide, projected for 2030, more than a half a billion people will succumb to diabetes type 2. It's the fastest growing chronic disease of lifestyle. Obesity is another one. And how at risk are people with obesity? 70% of South African women are overweight. 42% are obese. And on average, 60% of South Africans, including the gentlemen, are actually overweight and moving on to obesity. Now, babies are also at risk from pregnant women that are infected with COVID-19. Now, this was a study conducted in uh, the University of Milan in Italy. Now, HIV patients are at lesser risk of COVID-19 than those with diabetes or hypertension. So those people with diabetes and hypertension are more at risk, more vulnerable, than persons who are suffering from HIV. Now, this is according to the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. LGBT, these are the lesbians and gays and bisexuals and transgenders. They are also at a greater risk from COVID-19. Now, this was a California health interview survey that was conducted. And people are at the end of this, all ages can be infected by the coronavirus. Yes, it's more so the older side of the generation, but also those in their teens and even younger can succumb to this scourge that has hit the world. Now, what are some of the key symptoms? Just a few. Number one, if you're feeling feverish and tired, a little chronic, chronic fatigue, and uh, there is a dry cough, 
and you're going to sore throat and then shortness of breath. Now, so these are basically the one, two, three, four key symptoms telling you that there is something not right. Now, fever, that's, those are with temperatures of more than 38, 39 degrees Celsius. That's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I'm all gonna, we won't have time to discuss all the difference between coronavirus, the colds, and flus. Sufficient to say that fever is one key symptom, fatigue, the dry cough, and the sore throat, yes, and sometimes the shortness of breath. Now, these are the key symptoms of coronavirus, a little different to those suffering from an ordinary cold or flu. Now, the symptoms of coronavirus, you can see that in this chart over here, more than 67% of people, uh, more than 87%, will actually suffer from fever. Now, fever is the key symptom uh, for those with, the, with coronavirus. Now, what do you do if you think you are sick? Three things. Number one is call your health department hotline immediately. Make contact with them, tell them that you're not feeling well, and they will tell you exactly what to do. And number two, for example, is that uh, if you have these symptoms and uh, it's important then to move on to an emergency room and before you go there at the outpatient department of the local clinic healthcare center, tell them what the problem is and they will tell you exactly what to do. So stay in contact with the Department of Health and of course the local hospital. And if you feel that it is serious, very serious, and you're not feeling well, you can't breathe, especially, then an ambulance may be called, but you need to tell the ambulance uh, officials that are in, in charge that uh, you have symptoms, and these are the symptoms, and they will take the necessary precautions. Now, so the next slide begins to tell us about um, how to boost your immune system. Now, I'm not sure whether you are prepared to what I'm gonna share with you now. How to boost your immune system. Now, this is interesting. Now, we are continually under attack from viruses and carcinogens, cancer-causing substances, pollution and germs and bacteria and fungus, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we need to, for this attack on us, environmentally we need to have a strong immune system and everybody's talking about it so once again it is your life your health and your choice that we're talking about now the body's overall immune system works in unison it works together now these are some of the areas for example your tonsils and your spleen and the bone marrow and the lymph nodes etc but 80 percent of your immune system is lodged in your gut now this is where the gut is i can show you the slide over here uh, that's leaving the stomach, a little tube goes into the small intestine and up into the large intestine. This is the gut part. 80% of your immune system, that is another presentation, sits in the gut. So basically what I'm exposed to, eating and drinking and the poisons and the toxins that I could inhale, et cetera, et cetera, finding its way into the gut, 80% of my immune system is going to be able to handle that or not handle it, depending on how I'm poisoning myself with the foods and exposure to my environment. Now, the next slide we're looking at, I'll just get onto the slide. Uh, number one is water. <laughs> We're talking about how I can strengthen my immune system. This is the most precious liquid that God has given us. 85% of your brain comprises water. Therefore, it will help me to clear thinking, critical thinking in the frontal lobes of my brain. So I need water. I need good water. That's another presentation. I need even the tap water is not clear, clean water in South Africa, for example, and in the South Sub-Saharan Africa. We need to look at that maybe at some other time. So what are the benefits? The two key benefits in terms of my immune system, it fights infection and it removes the poisons that I'm exposed to. It helps doing that. Now, I need to drink eight glasses of water on a daily basis. Now, how do I, how do I calculate that? You take 30 milliliters of water for every kilogram body weight. So if you weigh 70 kilograms, you multiply it by 30, that's 2.1 liters. That is eight, about eight glasses. So here it is. 
A little bottle that we normally buy in the supermarkets, you can see the bottle over here, that is 500 milliliters. That equates to two glasses, two by 250 more glasses. I need eight of these glasses on a daily basis. So here is the day. So let's start here at the bottom right, around about five o'clock. So I'll take one glass of water first thing in the morning when I get up with some lemon juice on rising, and I will drink that glass and I will go and exercising for 45 minutes. Brisk walking is ideal early morning. I need the, elect the negatively charged oxygen. That also is powerful. It's also an antioxidant. It's also an antiviral, antibacterial, et cetera. And then when I come back, before breakfast an hour, I'll take the second glass of water, and then I will have my breakfast, six o'clock or seven o'clock, and by nine o'clock, I'll take another two glasses, and then goes on to lunchtime. I'm going to take another one, two glasses over here, run about half past two, three o'clock, and by five o'clock, I will have the other two glasses, and that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight glasses. Friends, those are the eight glasses I need to start there. And this, hopefully, pre preferably, warmish water, because that brings with itself a lot of benefits. Now, let's move on to the next, to the next slide. And uh, now let me put it this to you this way. Now, of course, the health benefits of drinking water with, let's say, a little half a lemon in the water at first glass in the morning. It boosts your immune system, it balances your pH, it relieves respiratory problems, lung, lung problems. It cures the throat infections and it reduces fever. It's also a blood purifier. So this is excellent, not too much, just a little half a cut lemon, uh, maybe three or four times a week. And that will give you these benefits, the health benefits of drinking lemon water. Now, friends, this is not water. Coca-Cola and coffees and teas and milos and coffee haze and all these things and beer and whiskeys. And this is not water. I'm talking about the Zulu word is amanzi. I want to drink pure water. This is not water. And then I go on to the next slide. And um, it begins to show us a little more about uh, the things that is not water. Fruit juice is not water. It's fruit juice. <laughs> it's not spelled water. I hear you get the message. Rooibos tea is not water. There's water in there, but it's not. I need pure, pure water. Nothing in it. Red Bull and Coca-Colas and Pepsi-Colas. I need to drink pure water. That's eight glasses of water. I need, number two, I need to avoid all types of sugars. Sugar breaks down your immune system. This is ordinary table sugar, whether it's icing sugar, whether it is white sugar, light brown sugar, dark brown sugar, like, like treacle, it like moves around like that. This is not what you should be putting through your mouth. Don't touch these things. This is poison, all these things. When you open this, when I'm exercising, my body is working, I'm exhaling carbon dioxide, that's a poison. The body gets rid of it from my lungs, I'm talking about our lungs. And now when I open this, I'm thirsty and I open this and I remove the top there, it goes, Shh. that's carbon dioxide. The body gets rid of carbon dioxide. Now I drink it back. Not, the, not, a, not a wise thing to do. And yet all the scary side effects of sugar, just 25 teaspoons. Now, if you're taking three, four teaspoons and a cup of coffee, maybe four times a day, that's close to 20 teaspoons of sugar already. And it reduces your white blood cells, the ability to destroy bacteria and other things by 50%. And you don't want to do that, right? This is drinking water. This is pure water. This is what God has given us. Now, the second thing I need to do to improve my immune system, I need to spend some time in the sunshine. Now, in midsummer, that is between 7 o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock, because our sun is very hot. And the ozone layer around the planet Earth has been broken down by air pollution. So I need to be careful that I don't spend time during over midday. And late in the afternoon, from 3 o'clock until 6 o'clock, this is midsummer time, I need to spend some time, at least 10 to 15 minutes, for people that are fairer skinned, a little darker skinned people, up to 20, 30 minutes on a daily basis. Friends, I need this. Why sunshine? I need sun. 
And that has a tremendous benefit for us. Now, this is the ultraviolet rays from the sun. It will come onto your skin. So you remove your shirts, not onto the jersey or the shirt. It must be on the bare skin for 50 minutes or 30 minutes, depending on the sun. And of course, then that will form vitamin D3. Importance, it must be vitamin D3. Now, that is the natural vitamin that God has given us. Now, on, this is the immunity. On the left side, the first time entrance of foreign invaders. When the baby is born, it's the first six months of year. And vitamin D strengthens. The bit of sunshine on the little infant strengthens his immune system. And as I grow older, I now be, become adaptive and acquired to certain invaders. And for this, I would need vitamin D as well. Vitamin D can reduce the risk of flu and uh, depression. People are fearful because of the coronavirus, the COVID-19. It reduces, sunshine is a wonderful depressant, antidepressant. I need to look at that. And also then it reduces the risk of getting all these autoimmune diseases. All right. So, and yeah, we, if I'm not sufficiently in the sun, I can get it from orange juice. There's vitamin D3 there as well. The whole grain oats and soybeans and tofu. These are some of the other sources of vitamin D3. So when you go for a supplement, you should not be getting vitamin D2. That's the unnatural one. The body doesn't recognize it. You must go for the vitamin D3, the natural vitamin that God has given us. Sometimes you can get vitamin D3 in soya milk or almond milk. That is, if it's supplemented, you can see over here, vitamin D. And those, in many cases, will be vitamin D3. That's the natural one that we should be using. Now, here it is, vitamin D3. You can buy this sometimes in the local pharmacies. And um, so your immune system... And then these could be supplements to help you. So it's vitamin D3, or it's called cholecalciferol. That is what you want to do. That is sunlight. What is interesting, this is interesting, is the more vitamin D3 I'm exposed to, there are at the right levels, it begins to reduce the impact of diseases that it will have upon me. Osteoporosis, heart attacks, hypertension. So if I'm taking the right amount of vitamin D, I get sufficient vitamin D, it brings down all these, the prevalence of these diseases will decrease considerably. Cancer of the colon, breast cancer, diabetes type 1 as well. Now, number three, this is now time for bed. <laughs> it's important that daddy and mommy meets with the children. There should be family worship. It's interesting how the whole world, planet Earth, from March, April, May, June, July, have suddenly moved on to look at themselves in introspection, whether their life is right. People are dying. Thousands have already died. Is my life right with God? God who created me, he knows what's best for me. We need to speak to God. We need to walk with him. God's spirit must guide us in terms of what is right and what is wrong. That's important. Number four, a small meal at night. <laughs> now, there's a lot that can be said about, about this. The main meal must be breakfast time and not dinner time. Now, we should stop eating after six o'clock. If we really have to have a meal at night, make it a smaller meal. And by six o'clock, you should be finished. You should have had your meal. You cannot go to bed at night with a tummy full of food. Now, I'll come on to that in a minute. Your stomach and gut also needs ribs. And here is your mouth and down the throat, and there's a stomach, and then goes to the tubia, and this is the small intestine, and here's the large intestine. The gastrointestinal area, the digestive area. We need, we need, beloved in Christ, giving it time to rest. There should be no digestion in the sleeping hours. The stomach, when we lie down to rest, should have done all its work. And sometimes people go to bed at night, having had a late meal at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, with a full tummy of food. That's not right. The stomach must have its regular periods for labor and rest. We won't have time to go through this slide. <clears throat> if you're going to eat some dairy foods, four to five hours for it to pass through the stomach, the emptying time. Meats and all meats foods, up to five to six to 
seven to eight hours. That means if you're having a big meal at night with a lot of food and some animal foods, through the night, the stomach is working. It should be resting. The brain needs to rest. The stomach needs to rest. And you need to rest. We're talking about increasing our immune system. For example, why does the risk of stroke reduce if we do not eat before going to bed? Well, it's interesting. And yes, the research has been done. All these temporary changes may affect stroke risk. Heartburn can be triggered by a few things, including eating and then lying down. So it's got to do with the digestive problems. I need to be careful. All these diseases are interrelated, depending on where the weakness in my system is. All right. Now, try and get on to the next slide. And um, so what are we saying? We all should be in bed by 2100 hours, 9 p.m. Well, that's interesting. Everybody should be sleeping, whether you're a student or not a student, you should be in bed by 2100 hours. The chances of catching a virus, what are the chances of catching a virus? Now, the immune system must be strong. The stronger the immune system, the stronger is your resistance to these germs, these microorganisms, which can cause havoc in my system. Look at this over here. Sleep protects against the common cold. Look at this, this interesting uh, uh, research that's been done over here. Chances of catching a cold when exposed to virus. If you're getting more than seven, to, uh, seven hours sleep, seven to eight hours, it's only about 10, 12, 13% chance of getting a cold, an already common cold. Six to seven hours, less sleep, up to 23%. And if you have only getting about five hours sleep at night, your chances of getting a common cold is 45%. How many of us do get colds during the, during the year, even in summer times? Because it's also related to the amount of time of sleep. Six-year-olds need 10 hours sleep. 12-year-olds need nine hours sleep. And you and I need seven to eight hours. Closer to eight hours, the better. That means by nine o'clock, I should be in bed. Nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five. By five o'clock, everybody should be up, especially in midsummer time. It's beautiful early in the morning. By 4.30, we should all be out doing our thing. Now, sunlight, we won't have time to discuss this, but sunlight hits a little gland inside the middle of the brain called the pineal gland. It sets itself right to produce God's natural sleeping drug called melatonin. That is a natural sleeping drug. So I'm out in the daytime, I'm in the sun, and the pineal gland's preparing itself. And by the time I go to bed at nine o'clock, the melatonin will come and put me to sleep. That is God's natural sleeping drug. I don't need an antidepressant, an anti-sleeping or a sleeping tablet to put me to bed. And when I go to bed, I should be sleeping in a dark room. No TVs, no cell phones. All the electrical social media equipment must be far away in another part of the house. Should not be inside your room. Now, nature will restore their vigor and strength in the sleeping hours if the laws are not violated. That's an interesting statement. During the nighttime, the brain needs to cleanse itself. That's purging time. I need to know that. Number six, best time to exercise. Early morning, fresh air. There's no exercise that can take the place of walking. It's the best remedy for diseased bodies. If our people would only get the blood circulation going, if our people would only walk five, six times a week for 45 minutes, if you can't walk and you're stuck in a wheelchair, then move your arms, but get this blood circulation somehow going. This comes out of an interesting statement. Cultivate your gardens. Uh, I just love gardening. Gardening is a wonderful stimulant for health. 45 to 60 minutes, five, six times a week. All right. And breathing. We should be breathing, showing the slide over here in the stomach. Again. The stomach should be moving in and out. That is where our breathing should be taking place. And we should be breathing deeply. People must see how you breathe. All right. Open your mouth, etc. Yes, a little exercise how we can improve uh, breathing, and you can repeat that five to ten times every morning. Helps prevent diseases. Exercise reduces the risk of heart disease and cancer and hypertension and diabetes and other diseases. Blood circulation to get rid of the poisons and to move the good foods I'm eating into the cells and to feed the cells. Negatively charged oxygen early morning. 
as if I go to the gymnasium and I'm exercising late in the afternoon, the air is polluted. The gymnasium is not a pure place to do exercise, by the way. Negatively charged oxygen early in the morning is antibacterial, antiviral, antivirus, antiparasitic, antifungal, antiworm. That's negatively charged oxygen. This is like an antibiotic, basically. It's anti all this. Negatively charged oxygen. You only get it early in the morning when there is no pollution out in the world. What is interesting in South Africa, for example, approximately and worldwide, 3.2 million deaths each year are attributable to insufficient physical activity. We don't work, we don't move around. And this slide, the study clearly shows here that as I become more active and more mobile, you can clearly see the chronic diseases risk decreases all the time. But the moment I am not exercising and not walking and not working my little garden, diseases goes up. The effect of exercise on immune function, the upper respiratory, that's where our lungs are, tract infection. The more I exercise, the better for me. Come on, friends, let's get out, let's become mobile. And this is also interesting. Exercise reduces the risk of heart disease by 42%. Diabetes decreases by 50% if I exercise regularly. People don't exercise. Okay, I wish I had more time to talk about them. And this is counterproductive. The body didn't, God didn't make us to, to, to penalize ourselves like that. And uh, running the comrades is not good either. God didn't make us like horses <clears throat> to run 85, 90 kilometers. That's wrong. And sometimes you read in the newspaper what happens to some of those people. Speak to Professor Tim Noakes from the University of Cape Town about these things. Number seven, saluting the most important meal of the day, breakfast, breakfast, number one. Why a good breakfast? Boost your, your metabolism, and it's number eight here, it strengthens your immune system. What is a good breakfast? Well, we're rising early, we're worshiping a glass of water, we're exercising, we had our bath, and then comes our fruits. We start with fruits in the morning after we had our water. And these things, this is what God has given us. The grapefruit, this is so powerful. Grapefruit. And here are the fruities that God has given us. We should be eating these fruits 20 minutes before we have our main breakfast. And look at these other things. Well, whatever food you eat, whether it's an apple or banana, but eat two or three of these fruits in the morning. Wait for 20, 25 minutes, and then you go and have your main meal. Look at this here. Yes, too. We also need fiber. Fiber is an anti antiviral, it's an anti-everything basically. 2.5 grams of fiber, here it is, in half an orange. And now I'm taking fruit juice. No, no, look, it's 0.5 grams. I need fiber. Well, that's part of another, another study. All I'm giving you, I'm giving you the key points here to give you a strong immune system. Now, here it is. It takes 20 to 30 minutes for the fruits that you're eating to pass through the stomach because in the stomach, the fruits are not digested. It's digested in the small intestine. That's why you got to eat the fruits and the veggies separately, the fruits and the proteins, et cetera, et cetera, separately. All right. Now, wait 20 minutes before the main breakfast. Main breakfast get digested in the stomach. And the fruits get digested here. If I'm eating these things together, there is fermentation in the stomach. And that's not nice. There is gases being formed and there is um, digestive problems, et cetera, et cetera. Another, another time for discussion. Now, the nutrients for healthy lungs. I've given you a summary of here, but let's look at these over here. I need vitamin A. And here are these little lovely, beautiful, yellowish, orangey fruits that God has given us. The carrots and the pawpaws and the cantaloupes, et cetera. I need vitamin A. So from this presentation, you need to select the mothers or the fathers who does the cooking at home must sit down on a Sunday and work out the program for the whole week. Tomorrow we're going to eat this, and then Tuesday we're going to eat that. I need vitamin C, and here are all the vitamin C fruits. Broccoli is probably the most powerful vitamin C containing foods that God has given us. Kiwi fruits. Come on. Look at this over here. This is wonderful. Broccoli contains twice the amount of vitamin C than an orange. It contains as much calcium as whole milk. 
dairy, <laughs> stay away from dairy foods. Glutathione. Glutathione is a combination of some amino acids, and glutathione is a strong poison remover. It's a detoxifier. It's an antioxidant. And so here are some of these foods that contains glutathione. Now, let's say you are slipping up a bit and you've got a few extra money. Then you go into the pharmacy and you buy yourself what called MAC, N-A-C, N-acetyl sustain. And this is available at the pharmacies. And you take it, the, the indications on there, and that will show you exactly what you need to do. A powerful boost of glutathione. Another one, nitric oxide. I wish I had more time to talk about nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is wonderful. It's beetroot, raw beetroot, and you blend it and you or you clean it up and etc. And you're going to drink it. It really stimulates. It also it opens up the pathway to the brain, the blood circulation. This is what this does. I need that. The rest of your breakfast, high fiber foods, and here it is. You can look at this, all the beans, there are many bean varieties. There are lentils and there's some of these nuts and there are some of these grains that God has given us. Potatoes, I need to work out my little program, my meal program for the week. A piece of whole wheat bread has 2.2 grams, whole wheat, and a piece of white bread, 0.6 grams. I need five of them. I need about 35 grams of fiber a day, adults. And most of us are getting between 10, 11, and 12 grams of fiber. We're getting enough. Oatmeal, four grams a bowl of uh, fiber, um, whole grain uh, oatmeal. And um, Rice Krispies and Kellogg's Corn Flakes, 0.5 gram. That's not food, brother and sister. Sorry to say that. I need the good stuff. And here are the vegan protein sources. Everybody says, now, where do you get your protein from? Look at this over here. Wheat grain, lentils, tofu, and whole rice and and peas and buckwheat and tempeh and beans or the green varieties and quinoa. Come on, this, this is, the variety is exhaustive, exhaustive. Let's take these things and that's where our protein source comes. Protein rich legumes, lupin beans, edami, uh, black beans, kidney beans, white beans, a lot of beans, pinto beans. These are the proteins. This is what God has given us. Lentils, beautiful. You can make lovely foods prep, uh, breakfast time with these things. And here are some more of these things, black beans and kidney beans. This is where our proteins come from. And by the way, Super A's uh, white mealy meal is genetically modified. Don't buy it. It's not food. Super A's white mealy meal is not food. It's GMO. And here is a food stuff. It's nice. It's maize meal, super maize meal. You can buy that. Three, I think there's three grades. It's GMO free. And this is what I would rather use. And then milk. Well, we are not going to use uh, milks, um, cow's milk. We can use either soy milk or almond milk, etc., oats milk, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you can use canola oil for maybe um, baking a bit, something of this, and a bit of uh, tomatoes, and what is what else you want to do. And it also proved by the Cancer Association of South Africa. All right. No drinking with meals. You already had your water before meal, and you're going to have it in between meals. You should not be drinking with meals. It weakens our immune system. No snacking in between meals. It's because I'm snacking because I'm not having a good breakfast. And these foods that I've displayed here is not what I should be taking. Lunchtime. Look at this. This is what God has given us. And you then take something with you to work, if you're at work, and you can select from these foodies over here. I'm not going to go into details, but that will be another presentation where you're looking at how you prepare these foods and what you can eat at different times. Bad eating habits. These are the wrong things. The donuts and the hamburgers is called double deckers and triple deckers. And now they're giving you these hamburgers and they put linseed over it to make it as if it is good for you. Linseed is fine, but not on these things. Western style fast foods, not good for us. And these things over here, and uh, the popcorns and the fish fingers and et cetera, et cetera. And the tomato sauces, et cetera, et cetera. No intake of animal food. Sorry to say that. We're talking about immune system. We're talking about your choice. You can choose from this. And what is interesting, these things weakens our immune system. No dairy products. Why? No dairy products. Dairy products <laughs> causes more mucilage more release from the, from the mouth through the, into the bronchus, into the tubes that leading into the lungs. It causes mucus and the lungs has got to cope with this. 
So people suffer sometimes from not breathing properly and they can't sleep at night because they got post nasal drips, the drips down the throat at night. It's because of the dairy foods that, that we're eating. And here we are, no condiments, no Worcester sauce, no tomato sauce, no mustards, no vinegars, no curries. These things are poisons. It weakens our immune system. We're talking about immune system, how we can resist the coronavirus. And no chocolates. Interesting, no chocolates, no sweeties. Dr. Orney says, uh, this was the Americans pushing the sales of beef, and they have the logo, it says, beef, real food for real people. And this top, top international physician and nutritionist says, real food for real death. The World Health Organization has finally released a statement that these foods over here is one of the key causes of cancer of the colon, breast cancer, etc. These foods, we know it, we now know it. Everybody says it's got nothing to do with the church. Maybe it has, but now finally they've come to agree that that, isn't, that is not good for us. Alcohol, stay away from because it it's just damages everything. There are more than 250,000 products on the supermarkets. Every single one of them contains something called these E numbers. E numbers are poisons. These are additives which they're adding to these foods to make it taste nice, to make it look nice, to make it feel nice on the mouth, on the palate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Friends in Christ, when you see, look at the ingredients, read the ingredients on these packs. And if there are E numbers under ingredients, then you should not be using it. There's a few exceptions. Right. Okay. Study the food labels. Cigarettes, stay away from cigarettes. Only two drinks weakens my immune system, reducing my ability to fight viruses and bacteria by 67%. Uh, that is, of course, two drinks of, of these things over here. Stay away from it. Coronavirus, how does it spread? Well, it spreads by droplets. Here I am. I'm sneezing and I'm coughing and I'm spitting a bit and drops. And uh, somebody can inhale it and uh, directly onto the person's skin and through contact. And we know these things, the transmission coronaviruses. Well, there I'm coughing and can't come onto my hands. And am I greeting somebody else, hand to hand greeting, direct contact or indirect contact? I'm going to the supermarkets, I'm pushing a trolley around, and this is how it's spread. We now, we've heard so much about it. This is how it gets transmitted from one person to another person. Now, this is interesting. If you are tested positive for the coronavirus, basically means that you should self-isolate yourself. If not, you go into the government institution and they will give you the place where you can self-isolate for 10 days to 12 to 14 days. On the other side, if you are not infected, it's important to self-isolate if you are close, if your friend, your close friend, or somebody else is infected, especially when a member of the family is infected. How are they going to handle that? It's best for that person to isolate himself outside the home, not at home. All right. It's now been shown, coming through more clearer and clearer, that COVID-19 viruses are airborne. So I'm sleeping here at night and I'm exhaling and the virus starts floating around and it's going to get to somebody else and they will contract the virus. Here's an article published 29th of July. That's just a few days ago, 2020. And the article appeared in Nature. There it is. How to prevent coronavirus infection? Well, hand sanitizers. With chemicals, be careful because there are phthalates, there are poisons in some of these, of, of these sanitizers. No alcohol. Trichosland can damage thyroid gland. The best is to use soap and water and wash your hands. And if you've got to sanitize, if you have to sanitize because you're going to supermarkets, then the moment you get home, wash it off with soap and water, not with something else, not with another sanitizer. Wet your hands with clean running water, apply soap for 20 seconds, everybody talks about it, and avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth with these things, right? And we should be washing our hands like the physician when he goes in to do an operation, in between the fingers and the nails, and you're taking your point of your fingers and rubbing it in between the palm of your hand, and that's how we should be cleaning ourselves. Cover your mouth and nose with a cloth face. Now, I'm going to say something here, and I hope it's not contradictory. 
I hope nobody is going to take me to court for this. But if you're exercising and you're on your own, why should you be using a, wearing a mask? Now you're exhaling carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, and you're also exhaling poisons, maybe some microorganisms, and it's getting lodged into and it's floating around your nose, and now you're inhaling it again. Many people have written about this, the top, top scientists. It's best when you're exercising to take the mask off and rather do it quietly on your own. You're not near anybody. And when you get back home and in, in the community again where you're, there are people around you, then you put your mask in. Surfaces, trolleys, when you go into there, get that thing, that handle wiped. And I would rather wear a little glove before I go into these places. I don't do the shopping. Well, I won't do the shopping, but if you have to go in here, I'll be wearing a glove and making sure that that thing is properly cleaned. Please practice social distancing, 1.5 meters. This is important. Well, everybody's agreeing to that. Cover the coughs and seizures, and when you're coughing and into your into a hanky or a tissue, then you throw it in the bin and get rid of it. Avoid close contact. Friends, I can't overemphasize this. Inside and outside your home, especially where there are people. Inside your home, if somebody, that person should be going to self-isolation. Self now, you won't have time to go through these things over here. Air lasts about three hours for it to be um, active. And the copper lasts about four hours if there is touching on the copper, cardboard, 24 hours. And plastic surfaces can last, the, the viral infection can be around for about three days, et cetera. Here we are, this is what we're talking about. Can humans catch coronavirus from pets? No. Gargle with an antiseptic like lemon every single day. That helps. We spoke about lemon very briefly earlier on. Your washing should be online, outside. That's where it should be, in the sun. Let the sun help you not cleaning yourself, improving your own immune system, but also helping getting rid of the bugs there. And shower and bath as often as you can. When you can, rather do that. Okay, public transport, interesting. I now see that in South Africa, in one of our little areas, Soweto, it's a top area. And uh, I think a thousand taxis is now gonna be fitted with a separation between the driver, plastic uh, separation over here. And uh, I just hope that they, st that they stick to the regulations now for, for taxis. So should I be getting in there? I don't know. If I can walk the distance, maybe. If I can't, then you should be well protected and making sure that you are follow the rules and regulations around protecting yourself. Health benefits of ginseng, interesting little root here, boost your immune system. These are some of the things that we can do as well. Okay. And uh, as we're coming to the end, uh, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's Psalm 139 verses, one, uh, verses 19. Beloved, we should be looking at this. And uh, Christ formed Adam from the dust of the earth and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. We should be careful how we treat ourselves. Look after yourself, protect yourself. And I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health. This is God's wish for us. 3 John verses 2. And there it is. So as I'm coming to the end of this presentation, I have a decision to make. I can go left. I can go right. It's your health. It's your life. It's your choice. And I'm praying that God will help us make the right choice. And that is the choice. And God has given us all... This is the most scientific book that I've ever studied. All the health messages are inside this book. Read it. Genesis 1, Genesis 2, Genesis 3. And then we're coming right through the Old and the New Testament. And the laws given to Moses, the health laws, they're all there. They're still applicable. They're still relevant to us. And may God keep us and may we benefit from simple approach to resisting the impact of the virus.